Today we're going to talk about a software that I have covered in this channel before, but I want to go more in depth. And a software that is currently not able to be found out as AI content. This program I've mentioned before, it's Content at Scale, and I'm going to go into detail, talk about the posts that I've created already, how they're doing, how the content is measuring up to other AI tools, and just my overall thoughts of everything. You might be pretty pleased with what my content is doing already, the ones that I've posted. I didn't get them all posted, unfortunately, because I got a little busy with something else, but now I'm gonna go back after doing this and post the other three articles. So with that said, let's go ahead and hit the computer and I can show you what I'm talking about. And make sure you stay till the end because I'm also gonna show you some other stuff, some tricks that, you know, I probably shouldn't be. Okay, let's go ahead and get in the rankings and start where we're at here. So with this site, I've done eight articles, uh, three of which you can see here are pending optimization. These three are not posted yet. Like I said, I got a little busy and I'm going to try to get those up today. So let's go over the rankings and let you know how they did. First, we're going to go over the bottom here. Does humidifier make room warmer? Humidifiers is something newer that I'm on, so it's not going to rank as well, but I did get on there and I'm ranked 30th. This is Ozone. This is the first Ozone article. It's not ranking yet. Usually when you just have one of a category, you're not going to see that. And then we have these three pending. And then Oil Burner, again, brand new category. First one of those not ranking. And then we have these two here. Unlock the benefits of vanilla extract. That is ranking 10th on Google. And then can I put Fabioso in my diffuser? That's ranking 5th. So we do have some rankings already. It's only been about a week since we've done this. And I, you can see at the top here, I have used all my credits. I did do two in my other website to see how it would do. And I thought the articles came out brilliant. It was a very technical site and I was just in awe on how good they looked. And I didn't know if they would be ranking yet because it has been pretty soon, but I looked and they are showing 55th and 50th. So they're not doing amazing yet, but that site is one that is actually a little bit newer than this site, though it does rank, usually ranks slower than this site. So the, that those articles, how can I say, they kind of like, they rank slower, but then they usually don't ping pong all around like other sites do. So I'm going to be curious to see how that continues to do. So with these articles, as I mentioned, the AI detection is amazing. So if we go ahead and just copy this first here, we can go into these three de AI detectors. This is the one on writer.com. If I analyze this, we're going to see 99% human generated, which is great. That is, this is kind of like the... Uh, easiest from what I see so like this is the most forgiving and then we have the content at scales AI detector we can check this at 99% as well and then we go to GP2 this one's not always working but it is I think the most efficient because it's so uh, specific so this one gets 94.77 now this was at 99.8 I think when I originally did it I might have changed a few things here and there and it may have even made it look more like AI because I have such a basic vocabulary I guess but this is a GPT-2 detector and these are the three that I can get to that are free because other detectors you could pay for but I kind of go through and judge stuff through these and kind of get an idea. This is the best one to do here. But the site's been crashing a lot, probably because so many people are using it. It slows down after a few queries. It just, it can't keep up. So usually I've been using this one and this one. So why is AI detection so important? Well, it's so important because a lot of AI generators don't check for this. Example is Jarvis. Jarvis will not go through and check for this to make it human generated. It's going to come up probably at a 0% and it's going to say that's AI content if you just write with Jarvis because that's how it is. 
Now, some people are using Jarvis just as a writing assistant, and everyone's like, yeah, that's fine, that's fine. But you have to think about it. If you're using it as a writing assistant, and it pops out two sentences, and there's zero, and then you type some sentences, your content's going to be pretty mixed. So if you are using Jarvis, I mean, you do what you do. If it's working for you, continue to do it. What I would recommend is using something like Quillbot. Quillbot can go through and rephrase whatever words you're looking for. So I'm going to show you an example here. Sometimes I've noticed intros could be a little messed up and need a little help. So with this one, if we go into this AI detector and I pasted this in, now this is, like I said, the most forgiving and probably the least trusted. However, it's probably the fastest responding. Content at Scales re responds pretty quickly too. But we got 79% with this portion here. And this is... I believe to be AI content. So if we go into the AI detector content at scale, it says obvious AI 0%. So if we go into GP2, again, 0.02% real. This portion is fake and it's AI. So what we like to do is go into something like Quillbot, paste it here, and uh, you can use these different sections here. I like to use creative, move it up a notch, so it doesn't change it too much, but it changes it good. If you can't find anything on creative, standard works. If you can't find anything on creative or standard, simple works. So I don't reread this. I copy this, and then I go right into an AI detector. Again, this one's not doing so well for this one, so we will paste it in here, and we'll check, and we'll see if the score goes up. 14%, so nope, still AI. We'll go back, we'll rephrase, we'll copy, we'll go back here, and rephrase. Oh, this one does look actually good. So it looks like it just took a moment. So this one, like I said, this AI is the quickest, but it's the least accurate. So we're just gonna close off on that one and we're just gonna go with these two. So we got 75%, so it looks good, which means not AI basically. So if we go in here and we paste it here, we'll see what it finds out and it's predicting. And like I said, this site crashes a lot. It doesn't work a lot because just too many people are using it. So we'll see if it does load up here or not. While we're waiting for this, I just wanna say I am an affiliate of Content at Scale. I am using it and I'm really liking it. The more I'm checking into other things, the more I'm noticing how good it is. And a lot of the articles that I didn't rank for or ones that I didn't really optimize, I just kind of threw them up and just, I made sure they're correct. However, I didn't go through and add the terms like I was supposed to. I kind of rushed it. And doing that, I kind of, you know, think that was wrong because you're paying a good amount per article. You want to make sure each article is amazing because it's not always about quantity. It's about quality, especially where Google is going. You know, they've just had an update on their backlinks. So now backlinks can not count if they're from sites that are, you know, just going through and doing it too much with this recent spam update. So a lot of things are changing and I think this is going to help smaller and newer sites rank better. All right, I close and reopen this, see if we can get it to work because it wasn't going anywhere. But I do believe in content at scale and I don't believe it is able to be caught right now. So with that said, I am an affiliate. My link is down below. It does help me a lot. And by using that link, it will help me do more videos on content at scale and show more tips and tricks because I am learning more stuff. But like I'm showing you here, there is ways to get around and get some content going. You know, I did take an AI that was pretty much 0% and turned it in 81% with Quillbot. This does help, but I will tell you, sometimes you just can't get that percentage up. Sometimes you'll be stuck at 20 or 40%. You know, I'll try creative. Eventually you'll start rotating through and doing the same ones because it can only reword things so many ways. And then you go to standard, do it again, simple at the very last one. But creative usually gives extra words that makes it a lot more readable and makes it look more real. So now I would enter this into the article that I had that was AI, if that was the case, and it would be good. Quillbot does have a free service where it's 125 words you can scan without paying, which a lot of times is enough because you just wanna do these small portions at a time it can take up to like, I think 6,000 with premium. And I did get the premium just because it's not that expensive. And because it's not that expensive, I wanted to try it out for a month. 
And so far, I'm pretty impressed with it. It's not going to do stuff like content at scale. It's not going to give you that 100%, but it's going to get you off of that 0% definitely AI type, which so many sites are getting penalized for. So if we're talking about Jasper compared to content at scale, if you're a blogger, content at scale is so much better because it's just going to do everything for you. I have videos on this and I'll put that at the end and I'll put one up top as well. But as you can see, this article, which was ranking 10th already, was very well set up. You know, I didn't hit these keyword terms that I wanted to. I didn't get vanilla oil in there, which I was upset that I didn't do that. So I might have to go back and get these three in, maybe not the coffee cup, I don't know, but the other two and make sure they're set up correctly. Now I might have hit Grammarly on WordPress itself. I am using the takeaways. You can turn these features off. I have turned it turned off the click to tweet feature because I didn't like that. Takeaway is interesting and I'm kind of seeing how it ranks because it's kind of doubling up a lot of your keywords and sometimes they can be a little wordy and it's like why not you know, is it really worth reading this over this? You know, I, I don't know. There's also no interlinks on these pages. So none of these have been interlinked at all. I haven't got that far. So do getting rankings like 10 and 5th on two articles that are not interlinked at all is really well. And also articles that are not optimized in my area. But overall, this one looks like it hit pretty well out the gate so there wasn't a huge amount of stuff to add i'll definitely go through and add vanilla oil especially since it's ranking fifth and i'll add some links to it to kind of push it up a little more i know jasper can do a lot of things and yes you know content at ai is pricey so it is expensive but you get a lot for it remember this is replacing writers so you don't have to deal with a writer and you get it pretty much you know a minute or two you get the article later so it's just going through and processing it. Now, I'm saying right now, this is not detectable as of this video that I'm aware of, which I'm pretty sure it's not because it's 100% across all the detectors that I was able to find. Now, in six months, could it be? I don't know. I feel like it might be able to, but I feel like the writing is so good. And even if you read the writing, it is very well done. The only thing I have to say about the writing that I don't like is sometimes the sentences are kind of long, but a lot of people do write with long sentences. And I don't think they're run on sentences. They're just really long. Another huge feature people don't even think about is with content at scale. You're not talking to writers. Yes, right, right. But the thing is, you're not talking to writers. You're not putting your niche out there. So people aren't going to know what your niche is by going through and asking stuff. Now I know it's not doesn't happen often, but it could. You could go through and get writing to a writer, say on iWriter, and that writer could steal your niche. He could steal your keywords. He could sell them to other people. You don't know what's happening with your keywords. You're hoping everyone is legit, but you know, it's not always the case. So it's nice that that happens because you don't have to worry about giving your keywords and your information to make yourself more openable, especially if you have a really good niche that is doing very well. It's like, why tell anyone? And I've learned that myself. So with content at scale, I'm going to be completely honest. I do not have a paid subscription at the moment. I want to. It's just money's really tight. YouTube money has dipped so bad. I've never made what I'm making now on YouTube in a long time, in years. So because of that, I need to wait. But I'm hoping some people sign up, use the links, and it helps me be able to purchase it so I can go through and show more features and use it. Because I'll continue to use it on sites, on my sites, on lots of my sites. I want to continue going with it. I know, you know, you probably need keyword research and topics and stuff like that, but there are other ways of getting keywords. I've went over a few, you know, Keyword Chef is one that I use all the time. Again, my link for that's down below. Um, affiliate of that, I'm applying for Quillbot. So if I do get an affiliate link, I'll have it down below. If not, I'll just have the regular link. But you've probably heard about chat GPT and it does work very well. I've been using it and yeah, it's great, especially for things like getting ideas for blog posts. I can say,
There you go. Give me ideas for my blog all about fog machines. Now you can also do and say like, give me 10 ideas. You could say, you know, when it's done, I could say, give me more. You know, I could keep going. And some of these, you know, you probably hit most of them, but eventually you'll be like, ooh, that one's good. You know, I found two keywords on my RC write on site and that's great because I pretty much hit everything on that. But you kind of see how this goes. And you can also do things like, you know, make me a clickbait title for, you know, Here, we'll try this. Please make me a clickbait title for number three. Build your own fog machine in just a few easy steps. Yeah, we could try again. It's getting, it's using the word hack now. Uh, you could do things like that. And I mean, you can write articles with this, but again, it's gonna come out AI detected. You can go ahead and spin it with Quillbot. Again, you're not gonna hit that 100% 100%, the only thing that I've seen get even close is content at scale that hits it 100% or 99%. Usually when I wrote the articles, everything was 99, 100. And with this, you know, you're probably not gonna get anywhere near there. You could say, write an intro for a blog with this topic. And then we'll go ahead and copy this. And we'll run it in the AI detector and 10%. And then we'll run it into this one, see if it works. Yep, it's failing again, but obviously at 10%, it's not gonna work. That's when you go into here, you rephrase, and after you rephrase, you would read through it to make sure it makes sense. But most of the time, Quillbot is pretty good. So then we'll take that 10% and boom, we hit 100. That doesn't always happen. You know, so don't think you're gonna hit 100 every time. We've been pretty lucky in this video. Sometimes you'll be stuck at like zero or 10 or 5% and you just can't get any higher. And that usually happens on shorter sentences because there's just not as much to do. But when you have longer things that are like a paragraph like this, you'd usually get it in the 80s at least. But let's go ahead and go into GPT. Let's close it. Well, that's pretty much all we're going to get. It looks like uh, the GPT site is down, the uh, one that is hosting that. Um, like I said, it happens all the time. The site just the last week has been dying and probably because people are doing something like this. But this gives you an idea and this can help bring some AI content up. But the best way to do it is not have it at all. Go write the content at scale and, you know, have it written 100%. Because spinning it with Quillbot this is going to help your site for sure because you're getting a higher score. But for how long? I mean, they'll probably be able to detect it at some point because they're still not perfect. You know, it's still having some issues and eventually they may be able to detect it depending on how high your score gets. But when you're writing just like a human with content at scale, then there's not much that's going to be able to be done. All right, let's grab another section here. And we paste it in and a hundred percent. So why does this, why is content at scale so good? Why is it so much ahead of everything else? You can read it right over here. Most AIs are using like, for example, Jarvis, Jasper, whatever you want to call it, is predicting one word at a time, depending on the words that you've used in the past off of an algorithm. So it's from my understanding, one AI engine that is picking these. And with this one, they have a proprietary system where they use three different AI systems, and then they use NLP and semantic analysis algorithms. They also crawl Google, which is for the terms, and they parse all the top ranking content and put it together. So they kind of do what Surfer SEO does. I don't know if it's to the scale of Surfer because Surfer is very specific, but that's not what you're getting with this. With this, you're getting, you know, the basics, the, the top ones that are really important to hit. And they hope because the articles are so long that they'll just rank because most of your articles are around 2,600, 3,000 words when you go ahead and run them. So is the future going to be AI? 
I think so. Uh, I feel blogging is pretty much there. Now, I'm not a professional. I'm still a beginner in blogging and I'm learning a lot. But I'm learning that, you know, tools like Jasper can't be used alone. You need to go ahead and use it, pair it with something like Quillbot to go ahead and get your stuff moving higher. And you have, you know, ChatGPT, which you can use for a lot of things. I have used it for other things, but I don't want to mention them now because there's a lot of things going on that I'm doing and I want to see if I can get some results before I go ahead and start talking more about it. You know, but I had some ideas on how to help my business with this. And if it does well and this video does well, maybe we'll talk more about it. You can check out my site and you can see the AI generated content. Uh, how to use an oil burner is the content at scale. So is this one here, which is ranking 10th. This one's ranking 5th. And then these two are, or this one's not ranking. This one's ranking 30th. And this one I wrote with Pop, and it is ranking. I don't remember what. I think it's like on the second page of Google, but you could check that if you would like. I think it's like 15. Uh, this one's ranking the best, so I'll put it on the screen just so you can see it and you can read it at your own, but it reads very well. It doesn't read like AI. It doesn't usually get caught up too much. If I have to give you some bad things about content at scale, what I would say is sometimes it duplicates the conclusion, which isn't a problem. Just remove whichever conclusion is worse and make sure it's at the end. Sometimes the FAQs are not always accurate. I, I'm not gonna say it's 100%, it's like maybe like, 15 to 20%, but sometimes they'll be conflicting with the original article. So you want to make sure that is not the case. And if it is, just go through and change it. So this article broke down everything. And this is an article I thought it was going to have problems writing. And if you're worried about if you have a very like research intensive site, I feel like those are the ones it's doing best on. Now, I haven't done any product reviews yet, and to be honest, I don't know if I will because I kind of feel blogging is moving away from affiliate content more and more when it comes to products, basically. For me, anyway, I've not had good luck, and things are changing. I'm still making some money off Amazon, which is nice, but I, I want to get some sites that are just info only, and I want to go through and take those to the next level. I have two sites that I've had sitting and they only have, I think one is like six articles and the other one has like 20. And the one with six has like five articles ranked top five. Like it's one, two, three, four, and one, I think. And then uh, one article is like 18th. So I'm like, I need to work on that site because that site, <laughs> you know, it's got six articles Five of them are ranking in top five. I need to go ahead and put more attention to it. So if I can go through and get a hold of content at scale, maybe I'll do some for that and see how it goes. So that's all I had for you today. I just want to show you that AI is going through and a lot of it is detectable. Ways to help your content if it is and also what to get if you don't want to deal with it and you know, kind of future proof yourself because content at scale at this point currently looks like the best way to do it. If you're interested in more in content at scale, I'll put a video at the end here. Again, if you use my link below, it does help me out. Plus it gives you 20% more posts when you go ahead and order. So if you order the lower plan, which is 20 posts, you would get 24, you get 10 with the middle plan and 20 with the higher plan extra posts and that's per month that's gonna be that offer is a limited time however if you order with it you keep that offer so if you're able to get in before the limited time ends then you'll have that as long as you have the subscription if you have any questions make sure you leave them down below let me know what you think and hopefully this video helped you i know i've been really diving into ai and trying to figure out a lot about it and especially from the content portion recently. So hopefully these tips have helped. Here's a video on content at scale to check it out. I'll put it up here and thanks so much for the view.